Welcome, my name is Mark Gingrass and I'm going to talk to you guys about supply chain and the gated process, specifically the process within the 421st Supply Chain Management Squadron. First, who am I? You might be wondering, why am I doing this briefing? Let me give you a brief history of what my career path started out as and where it is now. You see at the top right there's a B-1 bomber. That was what I worked on when I was four years working on active duty aircraft. I was the end customer. Followed by that, I did a four year stint as civil service in the maintenance career field, working on the parts that went on the B-1 bomber. So I fixed the parts, I repaired them, I ordered parts for them, capacitors, resistors, whatever. I did all the testing. Following that, I did a demand forecasting job as an equipment specialist for propulsion. Basically, I forecasted the parts that I was going to need when I was repairing the parts in maintenance that the end customer is going to need in the very end. <clears throat> Following demand forecasting, I am now transitioning into an item management position or a supply planner, basically. So I have done a lot of the supply chain over the years, and that is why I'm here today doing this briefing. Quick overview of what we're going to talk about, supply chain and some of the challenges within the supply chain. I'm going to talk extensively on the leadership model and why we want to use it. I'm going to talk to you about the production machine, how it works, what's involved with it, including the gated process. And then I'm going to give you the so what, why we're doing this overview. And finally, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cylinders of excellence. Sometimes you might have heard that term as functional areas of excellence or pillars of excellence. First question is, what is a supply chain? I have depicted here a, a graph, basically, of a supply chain for a laptop. On the very bottom left, you see it says crude oil. Well, crude oil had to be taken from the earth. And that's a manufacturing supply in itself. People buy the crude oil to make plastic, plastic granulate in the second tier. And then keyboard manufacturers created keyboards out of the plastic and so on all the way up to the laptop. So the laptop is the product. Now the product needs to be distributed to the customers. They do that through wholesalers and then the retailers and finally end customer. So that's what a supply chain is. We hear the term a lot. Here's a graphical uh, depiction of what the supply chain really is. All of the ones that are to the left of laptop are the suppliers and the suppliers suppliers and even suppliers suppliers suppliers. Some of the challenges we have in the supply chain today are increased long lead times, production lead time and procurement lead time. The longer the time it is to get the product or the resources you need to build the product, the harder it is to predict in the end what to forecast. That's why if we have small lead times, we can make changes to it very quickly. And if you change your program, in other words, your fleet size or anything like that, we can change the quantities that we need. Age and weapon systems. Parts weren't supposed to be broken on the B-52 that are breaking because they weren't slated to last this long. Last I heard, it was going to be flying until 2045 and beyond. With aging parts, they break more often. They're more fragile. They might need more maintenance than normal. So we have to account for that. And the supply chains to manufacture these parts that are almost non-existent or completely are non-existent, we have to account for that within the supply chain. And that's where we come in with our intellectual skills. <clears throat> of course, increased in labor and material costs, that's a given. Everything goes up over time. If you buy today, it, the, the dollar today is worth more than, more than a dollar tomorrow, they say. So let's accurately forecast for tomorrow so that we can buy today correctly. Logistics costs are increasing, transportation increases, gasoline usually increases, just in general transportation and the security that goes along with that. Security classifications in today's times are getting more and more stringent. So taking that into account, that's going to affect our supply chain and our lead times. Okay, so here is the leadership model. This is part of the AFSC way, Art of the Possible. One of General Litchfield's cream of the crop uh, papers that he wrote or helped write. And at, in the middle you'll see it says common goals. And that's what we're going to focus on on this slide. The common goals are a rallying point for everyone in the whole sustainment center. 
The goals need to be meaningful at every level, from the top to the down, to the bottom to the shop level, leadership, supervision. We all must have the same common goals. It is mandated that not only do we have world-class sustainment, we're going to have world-class sustainment at the right cost. Understanding the rules and expectations, that allows everyone to know if they're having a good day. That's one of the big things that General Litchfield uh, tries to portray on us is, how do you know you're having a good day? Find the common goal. What did you do to participate in that common goal? And that could be your reason for having a good day. What is the output of today? And the having common goals will also engage your workforce, and it'll it'll you want to invest in the mission and success, and having the common goals will be a catalyst for the art of the possible. The next facet of the leadership model is the people, process, and resources area of this pie. You want to have the right skills, the right training, the right education, all that in a very friendly environment for your people because your f people are the main focus of everything that's going to be accomplished is through your people. Uh, resources, they're going to be running scarce, so you have to maintain the resources as best you can. Use as little as you can, just the right amount. Don't use excess, don't waste. That includes facilities, infrastructure, all those things. They're dwindling down. We have to use those resources wisely. And finally, the process. Continuous process improvement is the linchpin that binds the model together and it's a force multiplier. If you continue to do uh, process improvement events and you improve your process, you're going to need less resources and fewer people. You're going to need less of those things but accomplish more because you've made the process better. You've continuously improved the process. The process we have complete control over. The resources are dictated by money, Congress, budget issues, and the people. It's been downsizing for a while so you know we're going to have to do more with less. Speed, safety, quality, and cost. The next step is, of course, speed. It's not about cutting corners or simply working harder or faster. Speed is about throughput. It's about getting things through the gated process to where it needs to be without any hiccups. It's basically just that. Safety, we always want to be safe. Quality, if you pull the quality lever, you won't have to repeat processes, which will save time, which we don't have the time to repeat processes. We don't have people. We don't have the resources for it. So if you want a um, really effective program, you must have quality embedded within it. And of course, all that ties in with cost effectiveness. We have to do everything with the smallest footprint on the dollar bill. And finally, culture. We have to instill a culture of teamwork, accountability, respect. Uh, everything has to be transparent. You know, there's no hiding things. We're all stewards of a taxpayer, and everything we do costs money, and it all matters. And in the years to come, we're only going to get more downsized with the budgets for the Department of Defense. So we, we have to have a culture that always tries to make everything in this leadership model better for us. We have to utilize this model and think about it every day and be a part of it. Empower yourself to be a part of it. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you about the machine and what a machine really is. All a machine is, it's going to have a box around it and it's going to have gated process within. The reason why we have gates is so that we can easily break the work structure down into definite parts so we can start getting metrics for them and we can find problems and issues within each gate instead of looking at the whole thing all at once. So we've created the file maintenance production machine, the 421st. Uh, Walk the Walls committee has put together a machine that put file maintenance in it using the art of the possible principles. Every machine has an output. This one has gates, four gates specifically, and every gate has an entry and exit criteria. You can't enter the gate without the criteria being met, and you can't exit the gate without the criteria being met. All in all, after you go through all the gates, you, b you get an output. You want to make sure that output is something that you really truly want that machine to do. If anything doesn't contribute to the output of the machine, you've got to ask, why are we doing it? And of course, it takes time to get from the left side of this machine to the right. That would be considered flow time. Our gate one is data validation in the file maintenance arena. We validate things like updating 318 cards, transaction history analysis. We're looking at data before we even get to file maintenance. Because file maintenance is not open, it's dictated by policy, and it's not open yet. D200 is still working. 
So you got to wonder what the data you're looking at. Is it really necessary? Should I be looking at this data or another set of data? Is the data I'm looking at contributing to the output? If it doesn't, you got to ask yourself, why can't I eliminate this data, automate it, reduce it? Why are we doing this? When can we analyze this data? Why, why should we wait when it's available right now? So let's get to it. But again, eliminate, automate, etc. You want to get rid of the data if it doesn't contribute to the output. Gate 2 is the initial factor printouts. This is when you can actually input the data that you just analyzed. And as you can see, I put a quality lever in this slide and it's underlined. Because it's key that if you get things right in this gate, you won't have to do any repeated processes. What you see here in this gate is a list of terms, buys, repairs, etc. down the line. And it's in order of kind of uh, importance. So those little triangles are inventory levels and the rectangles where it says terms, buys, and repairs are buckets. Inside those buckets are parts or NSNs or assets, things, widgets. So inside of the terms bucket you have 72 NSNs. Every one of those NSNs has to travel through a process and that process is down there with a quality um, lever is and you've got to check all these various things for every single NSN and you do this over and over again. As you can see there's 72 terms, 92 buys, 120 repairs and so on. So you're repeating this process a couple hundred times through this process machine in gate one. Final file maintenance is gate three. I'm sorry, gate two was the last one. So gate three is the final file maintenance. Uh, don't let the word final confuse you. It's actually not the final. Typically we had about 10 days to do a final and as you can see I highlighted quality lever again. Again we're doing the same thing we did in gate two. We're validating and correcting changes that should have been done in gate two yet we're in gate three doing it again. So maybe our quality issues uh, need to be revamped. And it's internal quality, not like an audit, not like quality from a different organization looking at us. It's it's internal. It'll save us time. So let's fix that. You know, Why are we doing this over and over again? Why are we making corrections and putting changes again and again in a gate that we could save those 10 days from? Finally, we have the summary file maintenance window. Again, I highlighted quality lever. As you can see, the quality control process is still in this gate. We're doing the same thing we did in gate two and gate three. We're repeating the process. Validate changes accepted. I mean, we must be really sure that these are right by now. The question is, can we move stuff to the left? Do we need to do the quality control three times? Why couldn't we just do it once? Why are we running what ifs? You know, simulations because we didn't get it done in time. It should have been done in time. If we had a better process and CPI events that fix the processes we have, we could get things done in time and with a better quality. Every one of these matches up with the leadership model. Um, teamwork, quality, speed, throughput, everything. We want to push things to the left. The further we can push stuff to the left, the more time we'll have. And the idea is when you have things that are automated or eliminated by looking at this process in a big map like this, you're going to have more intellect time. We're not going to do the mundane stapling files, sorting them, alphabetizing them. We're not going to do that three times. We're going to do it once. So we have more time to do stuff. And what do we have more time to do? More time to focus on the troubled parts that we can really focus on and put our intellect on so that we have a better accurate requirement in the very end. Like I said, the requirement in the end, the output, is the most important and that's lots and lots of money. So what? So what? So what if we do all this? Um, it's no big deal, right? Well, it is. Uh, Colonel Cotto, he was the, he's the wing commander at the time of this briefing and when I showed him the walk the walls we got done with it and he said so what and he was just being facetious he wanted me to to spit out the answer the answer is we're gonna save a lot of money millions and millions of dollars in the end uh, mainly because we are gonna have an accurate forecast requirement if we forecast correctly and accurately and we decrease those lead times we're gonna save millions of dollars overall it's money that we're allocating for future needs we're budgeting for if we budget correctly now, we're not taking money from a different pot that somebody else can use, that the warfighter in another area needs, but they've, they've divvied it up where uh, ours is more important, even though we're wrong. So if we're correct, our important stuff, it'll come through at the right cost. 
the wall the wall here or the gated process is uh, involvement process and empowerment everybody should be involved in trying to find things on this wall you know if you can find a place to improve slap a little sticker on that wall and say I'm gonna do a CPI event on this because I don't think terms should take 10 days I think they should take five or I don't think there should be 72 terms in the first place let's find out why we had 72 and not maybe 13 so slap a CPI event and get with your supervisors create one you know that's gonna save you time and manpower in the end because you're not doing 72 terms you're doing 13 once you fix the problem that'll give you time for using your intellect which as I said your intellect is what's most valuable that's why we get paid what we do that's why we're salaried employees for the US government <laughs> improve individual individual work areas this is this is a big one for me I I'm kind of a 6s you know sort straighten type of guy I don't want to do extra work I, I, I value motion I don't want to move more than I have to and so when you stapling factor printouts and stapling and stapling and stamping you know, if we can remove those by looking at the wall and providing ammunition to leadership to help improve these processes, we will um, save us time. So, the, so again, we can use our intellect instead of my manual labor of stapling and stamping. Why do we stamp a factor printout when we have to log into the system with our username and it's printed on the notepads? I don't know. Maybe we can change that. You've got to empower leadership with ammunition, and this is possible. With all that, you're going to have less stress because the mundane or the repeated work, the easy stuff, the signing goes, that type of thing, it's going to go away. Less stress. You're not going to have a pile of paperwork anymore once this is implemented and we continuously improve it. And lastly, you're going to make a difference. I mean, you're going to stand out. Your name's going to be out there. Not only that, on a resume, you can put your little project, your CPI event that you found on this wall. You're a part of it now. This is your wall and you can make changes to it you can make suggestions you could you could talk this in interviews you're gonna make a difference and it's gonna show and it's gonna show in your whole uh, career so what's next well we don't have the science and the math portion of this done quite yet uh, we're not quite there yet we plan on doing this in the next few months but tack time and how to get flow through this gate and the exact times it's hard to do but it's possible People didn't think it was possible to even gate this process. But now we've got a gated process with a repeatable, sustainable um, process. So why can't we ha have a tack time and s the science and math behind it so we can actually calculate the amount of times things are supposed to take? And once we do that, we can automate even showing those things. Continuous process improvement. <laughs> the walk the walls, the art of the possible, the leadership model, the gated process, it's all continuous process improvement. If we don't start today, we'll never start. We have to push this, you know. We have to push this and follow through to continuously make this better and better. This will not be my project. It won't be somebody else's project next to me. This is going to be your project. It's it's yours. You own it. You're empowered to do it. So if, if your process is terrible, it's up to you to change it, to find it on the wall, find it on the gated process, and bring it up. Make it red. Don't be afraid of red. That's part of the, the art of the possible as well. If something's in the red, that means that's opportunity to fix something, which will make your process better, which will give you less stress. We need your participation. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to talk to you quickly about cylinders of excellence. There's many different terms for this. Pillars of excellence, functional areas of excellence, whatever it may be. This is an example. You know, the customer wants a product, but <clears throat> in maintenance, this is just an example. Maintenance, somebody might be able to turn out an LRU in two hours. They fixed it. They put it all together. They tested it two hours they fix it they get an A plus they get a checkbox they get a award for this right so it goes through the maintenance process and then it sits there in inventory from weeks 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 or whatever or they didn't do something where it showed the demand or the data to the demand planner so they never actually knew that you needed these parts you cross canned it or something what I'm saying is it's not what maintenance does that's excellent it's not what a demand planner does that's excellent or a supply planner buyer anything it's not that it's the entire stream if you can't get from the very left of this value stream to the customer in a very efficient time at a cost-effective rate and with great quality standards if you can't do the whole stream it doesn't matter how excellent you are in any one of the functional areas it doesn't matter the end customer needs the product it doesn't care if the demand planner did an excellent job if the supplier 
the supply planner didn't. And that's concluding my presentation. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, I'm Martin Gingrass, and feel free to ask questions. And you can reach me on the global.